Let's continue uh, from what we did uh, last time. Uh, we started off uh, kind of reviewing what the linear equation is, and, and that it's, it's a graph, it's a straight line. We talked about what slope and y-intercept was, and that we're going to call it y naught from now on, or the value of y when x equals 0. And then, um, uh, oh, sometimes we, I, I call this the, the crutch equation, y equals mx plus b is the crutch equation. You'll see why here in a second. And here's what we did. We uh, took these data here, we graphed them, and um, from the graph we could say, oh, okay, there is a linear relationship between x and y. And, um, and then uh, we could calculate the slope doing a delta y over delta x calculation, and then look on the graph to see where, what the value of y was when x was 0. So there's my mathematical model. But um, this is an incomplete mathematical model. Uh, because usually these data actually represent things that we measured. Okay? So I'm going to pretend that I've got uh, an object um, that I, I want to calculate the, the weight for based on its length. And it could be something like this. It could be, um, let me zoom out a little bit. Let's pretend that you're an engineer and you need a mathematical model that represents the weight of some object. Like maybe here's a big, like a big uh, a pin or something like that, or, or, or you know, some object that's embedded in, and, and then, then here's a piece of wood, you know, or a beam of some kind with this pin driven through it, okay? And so what uh, x is going to represent is the length of this, okay? And then uh, what we're going to do is for every uh, length is we're, um, we're going to measure the, um, the weight of it, okay? And so what we did was um, we... Uh, when we look at the data here, let me. Uh, oh, when I when I look at the data, I'm going to say, well, what does x represent? Well, x really represents length in let's say feet. I know it's a physics class. I'm not supposed to use uh, metrics, but let's just say it's uh, it's in feet. And let's say the weight here. This is going to be weight in pounds. Again, I'm offending every physics teacher in the country uh, by using that. So when we graph this thing, we, we, we have a graph for the uh, weight of the object in pounds as a function of its length. Okay. Um, so we measured at one foot, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet. Um, let's say that I actually didn't measure this. I mean, what would the weight of this be at uh, zero length? It doesn't make sense. You wouldn't, you wouldn't attach anything to something you were building that had zero length, would you? No, that would be nonsense. So we're not going to uh, worry about this. We're just going to say, hey, when it was one foot long, two feet long, three feet long, four feet long, five feet long, when I went up and measured this thing, um, these are the lengths, and then I, I, I measured the weight as, as I made this part longer and longer and longer and longer. Okay, and so um, so when I have these data here, um, I really need to include. Well, I'm, I'm not going to call this the y-axis anymore, because what is this measuring over here? It's measuring weight. What would be a good letter, a good variable name for weight? How about W? Yeah. So this is going to be the W-axis, right? Does that make sense? The W-axis. But wait, in math we always use Y. Well, so what? You're not in math anymore. <laughs> You're in physics class. This axis can represent whatever you want it to. That's the power of it. Okay? So the vertical axis now doesn't measure Y anymore. It measures weight. And so we're going to call it W. Now what units are we using for weight? Pounds. So we should label that as pounds. Let me zoom in now so you can see a little better. Okay. Now, uh, what's the horizontal axis? You know, I'm every that, that's, that's the length of this part, right? The length of this part 
Well, let's say the, the, uh, the length of this part uh, would be a good letter to use for length. Oh, why would I use X? Why? Why would I use X? Because in math, we always use X. Okay, well, you're not in math, so chill out, all right? And then what is, so, oh, I hate X. Now, uh, now, by the way, we do use X for certain things in physics. So, you know, it, it, there's no law that says, but it's just, look, it makes more sense to call it L for length. Because we're trying to describe something that's real here. Now, what is um, uh, the L, uh, uh, what, what units are we using? Feet. Okay, so now when I go up here and I say, well, delta X, or actually I should call it what? Delta, I should call it delta L equals three, what? From here to here, three feet. So I'm gonna go three feet up here. And this delta Y, what is the delta Y? And oh, it's not delta Y, it's delta W. That's okay, the change in weight. Delta means change in, right? Change in what? Weight. Change in weight, six what? Pounds. So this is pounds. So what is this two? This is two what? Two pounds per feet or pounds per foot. What does that mean? This means that as this thing gets longer, it's, we're going to add weight to it, right? I mean, here's my part. As this part gets longer, doesn't it make sense that it's going to weigh more? Sure it does. I got more stuff. How much am I increasing the weight? I'm increasing it by two pounds every, every foot that I add to it. What if I add half a foot? And I'm only adding one pound. It's a ratio of two pounds per feet. So, so it works for fractions of, 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 of foot. Now, um, so what is this, uh, what does this three represent here? It says, why not? Well, it's not why not. What is it now? What are we using instead of Y? W. w. So it's W naught. Now, W naught, that's the weight when what is true? Weight when the length is zero. Well, and it's three pounds, <laughs> right? What do you think that three pounds is? Look at the part. What do you think that weight is? That three pounds? Yeah, it's this pin or this, this, this bolt or something that I stuck into it, right? So it's this thing right here. Does this thing change as the length gets bigger and bigger? No, it stays constant as I change the length. So that's what this three represents. It's saying, hey, look, this thing weighs three pounds no matter what. And then as I add length to it, um, as I add length to it, it, it weighs more and more, okay? So now I can come up with my mathematical model that the weight of this part is going to be equal, is equal to two pounds per foot times its length in feet. It's got to be in feet because you want to cancel out the, the feet there, right? Plus three pounds. This is a mathematical model that you can use to predict the weight of any, uh, uh, of any type of um, part that's, that fits this design. Does, does this mathematical model work for all lengths? Probably not, because look, look how I drew this thing. What if you're less than a foot? Well, you're, you're, you haven't even got to this thing yet, so you couldn't put it in there. So there is a limitation to this mathematical model. And you, as an engineer or a scientist, you have to understand the limitations of the mathematical models that you develop. But if you do, it's super powerful. Now you've got a little equation, you can put that into a computer. And you can use that in a computer-aided design software. I mean, that's what's going on. Like, it's those of you in robotics and learning CAD, in the computer, there's mathematical models like this for every part that's in there. Okay, so um, now what you need to do is this. 
you are going, well, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll go over the exact assignment tomorrow. So this just finishes the lecture. But I'll tell you what, since my other classes aren't finished with the lecture yet, uh, I'll give you a night with no homework. And we'll do uh, the problems in class. Uh, very good, that is all.